SteamOS 3.6 is finally available, albeit in preview. Valve released SteamOS 3.6 in preview channel, and while it isn't nearly as big as SteamOS 3.5 was, it still brings a healthy number of new features of which we will be going over today on my Steam Deck OLED. Many of which aren't necessarily features that I can showcase, but can still talk about anyways. So in this video, we'll be going over the changelog and what exactly has changed and demonstrate features where applicable. But before that, if you like this video or any other video I make, please like, subscribe, and share with all of your friends. Spreading the good gospel of high-tech low life lets the YouTube algorithm know that I'm doing well. So we'll begin with a general tab, updated to a more recent Arch Linux base, which is good, it's an update. The underlying Linux is updated, so that's good. Improved pairing experience with Apple AirPods. I don't have AirPods, so I can't really test this. Improved session recovery speed after GPU crashes. That sounds good. I can't say I recall a time where my GPU was crashed at all, but whatever, I guess. Fix some connectivity failures with access points supporting WPA3 security. I don't think I have WPA3 security, but I should probably set it up if possible. Updated Linux kernel to version 6.5. Upgrading the Linux kernel usually brings about stability updates as well as upgrades to performance and whatnot, and new drivers as well sometimes. It isn't a massive game-changing feature or anything of the sort, but it is appreciated nonetheless. Improved reliability on certain micro SD card usage scenarios. Fixed game session cursor offset alignment. Worked around misdetection of some SanDisk micro SD cards. Fixed an issue where a thin gray line could appear at the bottom of the screen during boot in some situations. Fixed an issue causing temporary files to accrue when using Flatpak. All right, that's good. So it should clean up some storage in your system. Maybe not too much storage, but it is storage nonetheless. Enabled support for Bluetooth, A2, DP, and BAP profiles. This is specifically related to Bluetooth audio, but I have to do some digging around to see what this exactly changes. Improved connection speed of some Bluetooth devices. Improved performance and stability in memory pressure situations. Fix an issue where the performance overlay would spuriously enable itself under certain conditions. Added mechanism to configure which Bluetooth device categories are allowed to wake the system from suspend. By default, controllers are the only devices that can wake the system from sleep. Finer grain UI configuration options will be available as part of a future update. I haven't personally experienced this for myself, but from reading this, it seems like there were issues with Bluetooth devices waking your Steam Deck up. More specifically, your Steam Deck OLEDs up. Things that weren't controllers waking the Steam Deck up seems to be a big issue, but now they seem to have resolved this issue. Now for display, and here are some pretty big changes. Improved display uniformity under certain conditions. Mura compensation. I don't have the Mura effect on my Steam Deck because I have the limited edition version that doesn't seem to have this issue, but it seems to be prevalent on regular OLED models, and they seem to have compensated it. Now, I have seen some screenshots of the Mura effect in action, and it does look quite greeny. If you have a limited edition OLED like me, you won't have this issue. This mostly pertains to standard OLEDs. Improved display color balance, reduced green tint at lower brightness levels under some conditions. Improved gamma uniformity, yellow tint, under some conditions. The big change there was that Valve implemented some sort of fix for the Mura effect, and they tweaked some of the color balance issues. Graphics and performance. Updated graphics driver to Mesa 24.1, and improved responsiveness of the Steam UI. This is interesting, they've updated Mesa drivers. So what exactly is Mesa? Well, Mesa is the main graphics driver that's running in SteamOS. Now granted, I couldn't find any specific details on Mesa 24.1 besides more stable and better performance. And to be fair, yes, those have been absolutely true. Driver updates can improve performance, but it's not earth shattering. After all, it is the same hardware. Now let's talk about desktop mode. They've updated the desktop environment to KDE Plasma 5.27.10. Valve tends to skip a couple of versions of KDE, so if you want the full picture, you will have to read multiple different change logs, which I'm not going to go through today. Enabled thumbnail previews for videos in the file browser, and fixed an issue with desktop use that could cause subsequent micro SD card auto mount to fail. You know, I've had this weird micro SD card issue and I didn't know what it was, but hey, it seems like Valve seems to have fixed it. Now let's talk Steam Deck Dock. 
The dock got its own separate update. To update it, you'll need to plug in your Steam Deck to the deck dock. First and foremost is support for HDMI CEC, which means you can turn the TV on with your Steam Deck. You can wake the TV up. You can control like the TV menu and such. You could even switch the inputs as well. This is excellent for TV use if, say, you plugged in your Steam Deck to your living room TV and played games that way. It's an excellent use case. And now it's even better. And of course, the new dock firmware includes fixes for high refresh rate variable refresh rate displays. I don't really have one of these to test out for myself. I have a couple of older monitors that only go up to 60Hz, and honestly, I can't be bothered to buy new ones. And of course, there are some BIOS changes, including overclocking controls on the LCD Steam Deck. There are also some additional changes for those that like to mod the Steam Deck. For example, you can modify files in the slash etc folder, and they get migrated to new OS versions based on a whitelist. Now granted, I don't really know what sorts of modifications would require you to write in the slash etc folder, but this is good news. What is important to note is that this is in the preview branch, and as such, some things may break, but that's to be expected when you go to these pre-release channels. Now admittedly, SteamOS 3.6 isn't nearly as big as some of the other Steam Deck updates, whether it's from earlier or even the biggest Steam Deck update, SteamOS 3.5. It mostly provides bug fixes, driver updates, underlying software updates, and even driver updates that improve performance. And yes, there is a feature for those that like to dock their Steam Decks to their TVs. This makes the Valve Steam Deck dock officially the best dock for those trying to plug their Steam Decks into their TVs, bar none. Let's talk about the feature though. SteamOS 3.7 is in the developer-only main channel, and as such, you shouldn't use it. But when SteamOS 3.7 gets ready for release sometime in some public channels, then I'll definitely check it out. But until then, I won't be talking about SteamOS 3.7 presumably for some time. Can't wait to see what's in store for us then. If you like this video, please press the like button and check out our other videos. And if you like those other videos as well, be sure to press the subscribe button and share the good gospel of high-tech lowlife with your friends. Furthermore, we have a community discord for enlightened individuals such as you. And if you wish to further support high-tech lowlife, be sure to check out our Patreon page. Links in the description.